It's very difficult to describe my work to someone who has never seen it before. It's, it's a lot easier if I have images of my work to show them because when I say that I'm a figural painter, they think of what they think a figural painter should be and I don't always fit into that box because I use old master techniques. But then I also like to play with that notion of the other in our culture and I think people don't want to look at that. So my paintings kind of confront the viewer with that. My name is Caitlin Krolchek and I'm a figural painter. This one is more planned out than most of my paintings, like, because I'll constantly go back and forth, and sometimes they end up more interesting because I don't know what I'm doing, but this one is just more laid out, so hopefully it won't be as labor intensive. But I took scenes from about five different deathbed portraits, cut it all up in Photoshop. It actually took me quite a while to get this photo together, and then a vintage photo of a nude man that I'm working from. At this point in my career, I prefer working from photographs. The reason I am attracted to these old medical photos is because they're so dramatic and it's a person, it's not a thing, it's not a medical condition, like you're looking at a person. That's the same reason why I was attracted to the memorial photography. It's kind of from that Banatos theme or, you know, a memento mori theme trying to remind people that they're going to die, that we're all mortal, and that you can't take it with you. So far, it's just brown and black underpainting mostly, and I'm gonna start going in with the skin tones. The whole point is to do these translucent layers, especially in skin tones, it's multiple translucent layers on top of one another until you start to get this realistic skin tone that, that really glows. I like the figures in my paintings to be passive, but they're also trying to interact with the viewer, just for them to have some sort of an emotional reaction to it. Sometimes it'll look like there's a story going on, and I usually don't like to tell people too much about what I think they should be seeing. I like them to be interested enough when they walk by to stop and think about what they think is going on in the painting when you are talking to a person or you look at a person, that you're gonna look in their eyes and see what their eyes are telling you. I tend to put a lot of effort into trying to make the picture make eye contact with the viewer no matter where they are at in the room. Oftentimes I'll have to repaint eyes over and over again until it's just right, just to inject that little bit of presence into the painting to make it come alive.
I've heard my work described as creating something beautiful out of something grotesque, and I think that is true. I'm trying to confront the viewer with this idea of mortality and sickness. People don't want to think about it or talk about it. And with my some of my paintings, they're confronted with it. And I really want them to feel familiar with it. And I, it, and I work with these figures that most people wouldn't feel familiar with at all, but I want them to keep that idea of the other in their mind. I know where people are coming from, but at the same time, that's all part of the human condition, and, and I don't think people should look away from it. I think they should look right at it, and that's what, what some of my paintings are trying to do, is trying to, trying to just draw a little bit of beauty out of this horrific condition and just giving that person back their dignity. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.